What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Professor Anime. Welcome back to another video. In today's video guys, I am here to bring you all my review of Bungo Stray Dogs Episode 7. So let's get it started. So this episode of Bungo Stray Dogs, I really enjoyed this episode of this series. And I think it's one of the better episodes that we have had from this series. I mean, the symbolism, the foreshadowing, just, you know, the action that's in the series. Uh, we get little comedy tidbits as well. And it seems that now we are heading into what is probably going to be the driving plot of this series. At least that is what I'm suspecting because in the last episode of Bungo Stray Dogs we saw Kunikita, Atsushi, and Desai go on this mission to track down a specific individual known as the Azure Messenger who is pretty much just been committing crimes. Uh, in the last episode we saw uh, the Azure Messenger you know take people hostage and in this episode we see that the Azure Messenger ends up placing a bomb in a facility and if it were to explode it will kill thousands and thousands of lives. Now in the last episode <clears throat> excuse me, to where we see the three end up going on this mission to track down the Azure Messenger, we end up meeting Sasaki, okay? Now, usually, you know, the person who is the one behind all the act tends to stick close to the actual, uh, you know, cases that have been going around, you know, the abductions and whatnot. And Sasaki was a likely suspect, she was a likely suspect, but the thing is, throughout the entirety of that episode, you know, she really didn't pose anything that was suspicious about her. Now, when it came to in uh, this episode, she still didn't pose anything suspicious about her until we actually got the reveal to which she actually was the Azure Messenger. That was kind of strange because I originally thought it was going to be Rakugo, which is like the computer hacker sort of informant that uh, uh, was talking to Kunikita in this episode. Like, I thought it was originally going to be him because he seemed kind of suspicious due to the connections he had with the Azure Messenger. But, sadly, I guess I was wrong and Sasuke was the one who ended up being the Azure Messenger and she ended up dying in this episode as well. Now, directly after we find out that the Azure Messenger is, in fact, Sasuke, we also learn about the Azure King. Now, the Azure King ended up killing Rakugo's father, and it seems that Sasuke uh, became the Azure Messenger to pretty much, you know, follow in the Azure King's footsteps, so to speak, because it is said that nobody really knows who the Azure King is, and many people said that he uh, died, but he could have possibly faked his own death. So that really brings up the question, who exactly is the Azure King? Okay, and also we got little tidbits in this episode as well, um, and as well as the last episode to, you know, discovering Kunikita's ideals, his beliefs, his goals, and the such. We see that uh, Sasaki ends up uh, reading his ideal uh, book in this episode right before the reveal, and she starts to say, you know, I really like a man with ideals and passion, and then she, when she looks at Kunikina's book, she said, this is a little bit too much, okay? But the thing by the end of the episode that Sasaki says is that Sasaki um, says that Kunikita reminds her a lot of the Azure King, and then we also have it to where when Sasaki eventually dies in this episode, by the end, we have it to where Desai and Kunikita are, you know, pretty much, you know, lecturing one another. Uh, they are arguing over the fact that why did things have to end this way? And Desai basically says, in the end, Kunikita, you were the one to eventually end up killing Sasaki in the process. The two people who ended up getting Sasaki involved in all this was the Azure King and you because of your ideals they are alike and if you tend to go after your ideals you know your expectations are going to be higher and when it comes to your ideals they eventually will end up corrupting you 
So, this has some sort of symbolism as to what we can expect in Kunikita's character later down the line. We can eventually see Kunikita, you know, might end up being corrupted, might end up turning to a more darker side, you know, and maybe end up going up against the Zai in the near future. We have these two friends who might end up going up against one another, but in general, from what we can gather in this episode, is that the symbolism that we saw in the last episode, and also in this episode, is that you know, Kunikita's ideals could end up corrupting him later down the line to where, you know, he will eventually go down a more darker path. So yeah, I really enjoyed this episode of Bungo Stray Dogs. I mean, we got some action, comedy, foreshadowing, symbolism, and also when it came to the uh, bomb in this episode, we didn't get the occasional cliche that you see in most movies or literature in general, where the person who ends up disarming the bomb only has a few seconds left to spare. But in this episode of Bungo Stray Dogs, we see that basically uh, Kunikita, you know, him disarming the bomb, but he has about two and a half minutes to spare. So I thought that was a breath of fresh air rather than just you know going the cliche route and only having a few seconds to spare you know so I thought that was pretty cool and then also uh, when it came to uh, Kunikina's ability we learned just a little bit more about his ability in this episode as well he states that he can only uh, summon things with his dopo poet ability uh, to about the same uh, size and shape as his book so you know that was kind of cool to uh, actually learn more about his uh, technique I mean basically stuff like flashbangs or a gun or something like that something really small not too huge you know I like how we get to learn more about these characters abilities and that just brings more characterization to to their character so we now know that Kunikita can't summon anything you know that is you know too big you know he can only summon things that are about the size of his own book so yeah I really like this episode of Bungo Straight Dogs let me know in the comments down below on what you thought about this episode and of course if you like this video don't forget to drop a like it always helps out the channel and if you want to stick up to date to my future content on this channel please hit that red subscribe button below and you will never miss a video for you that about does it for this video guys and I'll catch you all in the next one peace